Welcome back. This is day three of your immune system. Today we are still talking about how does the immune system maintain homeostasis. But before we get to that, you guys have got a do now. So go ahead and pause this video and tell me why do you think some people are allergic to non-threatening items like peanuts? Someone with a peanut allergy may die if not treated. Why is this? What are allergies? So pause this video, write down what you know, and then press play when you're ready to go over it. Now, I may have lied because I'm not actually going to review this with you right now. Um, and I've got a reason for that because by the end of this video, I am confident that you guys are going to be allergy extraordinaires and are going to be able to answer this question without my help. So let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do today is read a short passage about what exactly are allergies. Okay, and as we do that, I want you guys to make any important annotations on your paper. And we're going to use that information to then answer the questions below this passage. Okay, so let's get started. Allergic reactions result from overactivity. Oh, oh, okay, you didn't see that. Result from overactivity of the immune system. During an allergic reaction, the body's immune system responds inappropriately to common substances such as dust, mold, pollen, or certain foods by producing a special type of antibody to them. In most people, these substances do not cause an allergic reaction or production of antibodies. These antibodies cause cells in the body to release substances, including histamines, which cause many allergic symptoms. Um, all right. Now, I'm gonna pause this right there because we've actually seen this word histamines before. I believe we saw it on day one or day two of our immune system, where we learned that histamines actually cause our inflammatory response. Okay, and that same inflammatory response happens here when someone is allergic to something. And that is going to cause allergic symptoms such as extra fluid in the nasal passages, difficulty breathing, or hives. These allergies are often treated with antihistamines, drugs that stop the release of histamines. So on this picture, I've got some examples of common allergies that people have. Maybe you're allergic to some of these. You may be allergic to poisonous plants like poison ivy, pollen, latex, medications, nuts and shellfish, dust, mold and mildew, or animal dander. Maybe you're allergic to cats or dogs. So what exactly are allergies? I want you guys to pause this video and using information that we just read, tell me what is an allergy? What is it? All right, so what are allergies? Well, allergies happen when the immune system responds to a harmless stimulus. Specifically, it re responds to an antigen that is not part of a pathogen. So to put that in simpler terms, allergies are basically just your immune system being dramatic and responding to threats that aren't actually there. So when you are allergic to something, your body thinks that you are in danger. It thinks that your cat dander or dust or pollen is a pathogen that is trying to invade your immune system or invade your body, but that's not really the case. So with allergies, immune system is responding to a harmless stimulus, trying to protect you from a threat that's not really there. Um, and we treat these with antihistamines. So antihistamines are going to decrease those, um, the production of histamines, which is going to hinder the production of those symptoms like runny nose or hives or difficulty breathing. Okay, now using that information, I want you guys to, same thing, pause this video, answer questions one and two on your own and press play when you're ready to review it. Now this time I'm actually going to tell you the right answers. So number one, allergic reactions usually occur when the immune system produces what? Okay, the answer here is going to be C, produce antibodies against usually, or usually harmless antigens. Now, some of us may have chosen A, antibiotics against usually harmless antigens, but our body can't produce antibiotics. This is a medicine. Our body does not produce these. Our body produces antibodies against those antigens. Okay, number two, an allergic reaction to certain types of natural unprocessed foods such as peanuts is caused by what? So what causes allergic reactions? Well, this is caused by a response to specific antigens and specifically antigens that aren't really there to hurt you, okay? Next up, we're gonna talk a little bit more about, about vaccines. So vaccines or vaccinations are weakened microorganisms or parts of them that stimulate the immune system to react by recognizing specific antigens. This reaction provides the body with immunity, the ability to resist an infection. It does so by preparing the body to fight subsequent invasions by the same microorganisms. Hold on, I'm getting 
backed up, because it can recognize the invaders and produce specific antibodies against them. People are now given harmless antigens and vaccines to offer protection against a number of diseases. So what exactly is a vaccine? Same thing, pause this video, use that information to summarize what is a vaccine and how do they work? Press play when you're ready to review it. All right, so what is a vaccine? Well, we need to know that vaccines are an injection of dead or weakened bacteria or viruses that can't cause the disease, but they teach your immune system to produce antibodies needed to fight them. So like every time you get your flu shot, that flu shot is going to contain dead or weakened strains of the virus that caused the flu. And that flu shot's not going to give you the flu. It just prepares your body to fight against it if you ever come in contact with that virus. So then how do vaccines work? Well, we need to write down that after vaccination, your body is going to build antibodies against those pathogens that were found in the vaccine. So that if you ever encounter that pathogen again, your immune system is prepared to destroy it as soon as possible. Okay, but I mentioned this yesterday, but I'm gonna say it again. The COVID-19 vaccine is actually a little bit different. And we're gonna talk about this some more tomorrow in, tomorrow in class on Friday. Um, the COVID-19 vaccine actually contains no viral particles. It does not contain the COVID-19 virus. It's what we call an mRNA vaccine, which is actually some pretty new technology that has just been approved. But it's also pretty exciting because this just means it contains the instructions needed to protect your body from this, from this disease. Um, so I'm not going to get into too much detail because, again, we are going to talk about it tomorrow. But I'm super excited by the possibility of mRNA vaccines becoming more frequent because they're basically like DIY vaccines. They're like do-it-yourself things where it teaches your body to produce these. I'm not, again, I'm, not, I'm giving away too many secrets, but it basically... All we need to know is it does not contain any sort of dead or weakened virus. It's something new. All right. The third thing we're going to do today is a little bit of a case study to summarize what we know and put your action to your put your knowledge to use. So I'm going to read through this passage and I want you guys to answer questions one through three based on this case study. Okay, so a student was visiting a friend at her home. Her friend owned two cats. After playing with the cats for a while, the student began to sneeze. Her nose began to run and her eyes became red, watery, and itchy. It also became hard for her to breathe. A few minutes after leaving her friend's home, the symptoms disappeared. Provide a biological explanation for the symptoms the girl developed at her friend's house. In your response, be sure to one, state one reason why her symptoms are not, are li not likely due to an infectious agent. Two, identify the type of reaction the student was most likely experiencing. And three, identify, identify the body system that was responsible for triggering the reaction she experienced. So pause this video, answer questions one through three on your own, and then we'll go over them. So number one, why were her symptoms not caused by an infectious agent? Well, an infection would one, take longer to develop, and two, not in so suddenly. The fact that her symptoms disappeared the second she left the house tells us that this is probably not caused by any sort of infectious pathogen. So two, what type of reaction was she experiencing? Okay, this is known as an allergic reaction. She has an, an allergy to cats, to the cat dander. So number three, what body system was responsible for triggering this? Hopefully you know that this is caused by the immune system. So her immune system began producing antibodies against the antigens found on cat dander because her immune system thought that those cats were a threat. They thought that the cat's dander were pathogens trying to take over her body, but again, they weren't. So allergic reactions or allergies are the overproduction of those antibodies for when they're not really needed. Okay. Number four through six is the same thing. I want you to describe how a flu vaccine protects the human body. First thing I want you to do is state one reason the flu vaccine does not protect a person from other viral diseases. Um, two, state how the human immune system reacts to the vaccine. And three, identify what substance is in a flu vaccine that stimulates immunity. So same thing, pause this video, press play when you're ready to review it. Okay, number four, state one reason the flu vaccine does not protect a person from other viral diseases. So the reason is that every pathogen has a specific antigen that requires its own specific antibody. 
And I use this word specific a lot because we need to remember that this is what we call a specific immune response. Okay, and what I, mean, what I mean by a specific immune response is that that flu vaccine is going to protect you from getting the flu. It's not going to protect you from getting the measles because those have different antigens on their surface. So those antibodies are specific to antigens from one pathogen. That flu vaccine is not going to prevent you from getting COVID. That flu vaccine is not going to prevent you from getting, the, I don't know, any other illness except for the flu strain that year. Um, so specific immune responses mean that specific antibodies are required for specific antigens. Every response is going to be unique or different. Okay, number five, state how the human immune system re reacts to the vaccine. So what happens? Well, our body begins to create antibodies. So if we ever encounter that pathogen again, our white blood cells already know how to, how to produce those antibodies we need to fight and kill that virus or that pathogen. Okay, so that flu vaccine is not going to give you the flu, but it's going to give your immune system and your body the tools that it needs to fight that, that virus in case your body ever comes in contact with it. And number six, what substance is in a flu vaccine that stimulates immunity? We need to know that in a flu vaccine, there are dead or weakened forms of that pathogen present that are going to, again, prepare your body to fight the pathogen should you ever come in contact with it again. Okay, use that information to complete your exit ticket. Let me know if you have any questions and have a wonderful day. I will see you guys tomorrow.